Hi folks and welcome to what's a pretty unusual episode of the Irish History Podcast. As many of you may be aware, I'm currently on Ackill Island where I'm looking at the story of the famine here. Over the next couple of days I'm going to be making a series of podcasts, videos and photo essays about life here during the 1840s. While most of this is going to be uploaded to Patreon and will only be available to patrons, I did want to give all of you a sense of what Ackle is like and what survives from the famine. So over the next 10 or 15 minutes, I've recorded a series of segments of different places I visited today. These include the abandoned village of Schlieve Moor, which was lived in up until the 1840s before that community moved to the village of Dua. There's also segments about various different aspects of life in the 1840s. If you like this show and want to hear more, there's going to be a lot of content uploaded to Patreon over the next couple of days. Already this morning, I've uploaded a podcast about the story of Ackle during the famine, so that's available right now. Tomorrow, there'll be another podcast with interviews with archaeologists who are currently excavating um, another village that was abandoned just after the famine. And their findings are really fascinating. So if you want to get that and so much more, just go to patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. That's patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. There's already some great content up there and there's going to be lots more tomorrow. It's mid-morning here on Ackle Island and I'm standing on... Dua Beach, which actually has become somewhat famous over the last couple of weeks. Here in Ackle, there's signs advertising it as the island's newest beach. And what this is referring to is um, the fact that storms recently washed a huge amount of sand up onto the shingle of the beach. There had once been a sandy beach here, but in the 1980s it had been washed away. But last April, as I said, storms washed that sand back. So it's been proclaimed as the island's newest beach. Um, Ackle Island, for those of you who don't know, it's situated off the west coast of Ireland. The island is shaped like two peninsulas, one running parallel to the west coast of Ireland and then the other jutting out into the Atlantic Ocean. And Dua is not too far away from where the two peninsulas meet. The northern coast of the island consists of a ridge of high hills. I'm looking up towards Schlieve Moor, where I'm going to go after this. Schlieve Moor is the highest hill on the island and it's actually quite famous because... Um, at the foot of that hill, there's an abandoned village um, also called Schlieve Moor and the houses preserved up there um, survive from the famine era. So I'm going to go check that out in a while. Further to the south of the island, the land is um, somewhat flatter and tends to be some of the better farmland. And then out on the peninsula that juts out into the Atlantic Ocean, you have Kim, which is where archaeologists from the Ackle Field School are excavating another famine village that was levelled just after the famine. Where I am now, at Dua, there's a, also a village. This is actually a much more recent village. When I say recent, it's about 150, 160 years old. And this was formed after the famine when Schlieve Moor, that earlier settlement I mentioned, was abandoned. The weather today is absolutely stunning. Behind me, you can probably hear it, is the Atlantic Ocean washing up against the shore. Um, I can see Clare Island directly south from me and then further south still, County Galway. To the west is the Atlantic Ocean, and pretty much nothing until you get to Newfoundland in Canada. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to be checking out some of the sites on the island relating to the famine. As I said, next I'm heading up to Schlieve Moor, and I'm going to record another segment of this podcast up there and give you a sense of what that's like. And then maybe I'll finish up by coming back down here and giving you further thoughts on the island. It's one o'clock in the afternoon and I've come up to what is probably the most famous site on Ackle and that's uh, Schlieve Moor. Schlieve Moor is an abandoned village that's preserved incredibly well. Um, it's most famous as a famine era settlement but actually the village stretches the whole way back to the late Middle Ages. It's actually mentioned in the Annals of Connacht during the Norman invasion of uh, the Kingdom of Connacht which took place in 1235. Um, But as I say, it's most famous as a famine era settlement. And when you come here, you still get a remarkable sense of what a village must have been like in the 1840s. There was about 130 houses here at one point. The remains of 80 of them still survive. You can walk down what was the main street or the main roadway in the village and the houses are on either side. You can walk into what was someone's house. For example, I'm recording this in what was a large house in Schlieve Moor. I say a large house, but it consisted of two rooms. 
the room I'm standing in now was about six meters by four meters and then there's a room behind it that measured about maybe five meters by four meters for any of you who um, listened to the series on the Mam Trasta murders that I made uh, before Christmas the house seems very similar to the house where those murders took place the most striking aspect of the house that struck me when I came in here is just how small it was um, each room is about the size of an average bedroom maybe slightly larger there's no doubt that living conditions in these houses certainly compared to modern houses was incredibly cramped given the houses are so small life obviously was much more communal at the time children must have spent a lot of time playing outside the houses while the settlement is an amazing insight into life as it was in the 1840s it's also somewhat eerie or lonely i'm here on what is a really lovely sunny day it's probably over 20 degrees at the moment but at the same time you look at these piles of stones and you can't help but think 150 170 years ago there was people living here it had all the sounds of life kids playing all the rest of it today all you hear is the sounds of sheep who now inhabit uh, what remains of the houses and uses them for shelter at the same time the settlement was inhabited during the famine and obviously it witnessed terrible things in those years today Sleeve Moor as I've said is completely abandoned and the story behind why people left here is not fully understood after the famine, all the land around this part of Ackle was transferred from Richard O'Donnell, the former landlord, to the Ackle Mission, a Protestant colony on the far side of the island. And in a process that's not entirely clear, there was a huge upheaval at Schlieve Moor that followed that transfer of land. And the people moved from here down to Dua, where I recorded uh, the first segment of this podcast. It's not that far, and the people who now live in Dua, their ancestors maintained a strong connection to Schlievemore even after they abandoned the village and relocated down towards the beach at Dua. Even up until the 1960s, they used to move back up here every summer and farm animals on the hillside. And then, I guess, in the more difficult winter conditions, they would go back down to Dua. Finally here, one thing that's really striking is um, what's most associated with the Great Famine in Ireland is obviously the potato. And all around the remains of Schlieve Moor, you can see these potato ridges that run up the hillside of Schlieve Moor and then back down towards the sea. And you, you can see those ridges that were used for generation after generation to provide potatoes that were what sustained life here for generations. So I'm back down at Dua Beach, having been up at Schlieve Moor. And I think being here puts an awful lot of the stories that I've covered over the last eight episodes in the podcast series in context being in a village like that you really get a sense of how people lived during the 1840s life was lived in such an unimaginably different way those houses are so small that i can't fathom what it would be like to live in one over the next couple of days as i said i'm going to be going to see lots of different sites relating to the famine so tomorrow morning i'm going up to the excavation where archaeologists are digging the remains of kim Kim is a really fascinating settlement that was destroyed after the famine by a man who many of you might know, a man called Captain Charles Boycott. That's where the name or the term boycott comes from. Now that relates to a later period in his life in the 1880s when he became embroiled in a conflict with his tenants during the land war. But in the 1850s in Ackle he got up to pretty notorious stuff. Um, I've released a podcast earlier today about the history of Ackle during the famine and I mentioned that. I'm also going to probably go into that in more detail tomorrow. Over the next couple of days you can get all this content of what I'm talking about. So that's there's already a podcast up there which outlines the story of Ackle during the famine. Tomorrow there's going to be interviews with uh, the team of archaeologists headed up by Dr Eve Campbell um, about what life was like during the Great Famine up at that settlement at Keem. Because while places like Sheeve Moor exist and you can walk around and get a sense of the houses up there they've got a much more detailed understanding they're excavating these houses finding artifacts from the time but also seeing how the houses are built and they'll be able to give us a much better picture of life as lived then Keem is also an absolutely stunning location it's further out the peninsula that juts out onto the Atlantic Ocean there's a coast guard station down there also over the next couple of days I'm going to make a film one of which is going to look at the story of um, why the communities here couldn't survive from fishing. So where I am now, I'm looking out over this absolutely pristine uh, Atlantic Ocean. People who came here during the famine talked about how the sea was full of fish, but yet the people on Ackle starved to death. So what I'm going to do is look at why that was the case. Um, and there's a very interesting story behind that. 
and then I'm also going to try and make a film about Edward Nangle. Edward Nangle is a man who dominated life on Akko, a very controversial figure, came here in the 1830s as a Protestant missionary, setting up a colony here to try and convert the islanders away from Catholicism to Protestantism. Now, his arrival started five decades of conflict between the Catholic Church and Nangle as the two battled for the souls of the people of Akko. That created a very unusual dynamic to the famine here on Ackle. So if you want to get that content, you just go to patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. That's patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. And there's details there about how to sign up and how to get those various different uh, videos, podcasts. And then tonight I'm also going to post a photo essay of places like Sleeve Moor. You get a sense of what they were like as well. So if you go to patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast, you can get that today.